Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at Ford Fulkerson's algorithm to find the maximum network flow in a graph. We're going to find the maximum flow between the source 0 and the sink 4. This particular graph has just five nodes, so we're going to walk you through an example of how Ford Fulkerson's algorithm works. What we first do is we first create a graph called the residual graph. Now let's see how the residual graph will look like. What we do is we add reverse edges between the nodes. So initially all these reverse edges have weights of zero. As you can see that each edge now has, has now become bidirectional, that is there is a reverse edge and the weight of the reverse edge is actually zero. We'll see how this is going to be useful. Initially the max flow, which has been initialized by this integer called init max flow, is zero. Now what we do is we first try to find out an augmenting path. An augmenting path is nothing but a simple path from the source to the sink. So in this particular case, the first augmenting path that we can think of is the one starting from 0, going to 3, then 1, and finally reaching the sink, 4. We can find the augmenting path using depth first search. You can also do it using breadth first search, but in this particular video, I'm going to talk about how do you find the augmenting path using depth per search. Now once we find this augmenting path, what we are going to do is we're going to find the bottleneck link on this augmenting path. By bottleneck link, I mean the link that has the least weight. In this particular case, the link between 0 and 3 has a weight of 3, which is the least weight. So what are we going to do? For each edge along this augmenting path, we are going to decrease the capacity of u to v by the bottleneck, that is going from the source to this, going from the source to the sink. And you're going to increase the zeros in this particular case by the corresponding bottleneck value. So let's see how that works. So first, what we're going to do is we're going to decrease each of these forward links by the bottleneck value. You can see that the value of the link from 1 to 4 now became 1 whereas the link from 4 to 1 now got a value of 3. Similarly, if you now look at the link between 3 and 1, it will be decreased by 2, and the, the value of the link between 1 and 3 gets increased by 3. The same thing is going to happen for the link between 0 and 3. So the link between 0 and 3 will now become 0, whereas the reverse link from 3 to 0 is now going to become going to increase by this value 3, which is the bottleneck. Having done that, what we are going to do is, we are going to now look for another augmenting path. There is another augmenting path, which goes from 0 to 2, and then 2 to 4. Once again, we are going to decrease all the forward links by the capacity of the bottleneck link, which in this case is the link between 2 and 4, and its value is 3. So all these forward links are going to get decreased by this value of 3 and all the, all the backward links are going to increase with this value of 3. So let's see how, what happens. So the link between 2 and 4 now becomes 0, whereas this backward link between 4 and 2 is now increased by the value of 3. The link between 0 and 2 decreases to 2, whereas the link between 2 and 3 now increases by this value 3. Now, having done that, we are now trying to going to find another augmenting path from the source to the sink using DFS. We'll see that there is one more path, which goes from 0 to 2, then it goes from 2 to 1, and then finally from 1 to 4. Now, the bottleneck link along this path is the one from 1 to 4, which has a value of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to once again decrease all these forward edges by this bottleneck value, which is 1, and increase all these backward edges by the same value. So the, <laughs> the link between 1 and 4 now becomes 0. The backward link in between 4 and 1 increases from 3 to 4. The same thing is going to happen for this link between 2 and 1, that is it decreases to 2, and this backward link from one and between 1 and 2 increases by 1. The same thing is going to happen for the link between 0 and 2. Two. At this stage, what we will see is we have found all the augmenting paths that exist from the source to the destination. 
there are no more augmenting paths left. At this particular case, what we have reached is the end of Ford for Kirsten's algorithm. Now the maximum flow in this particular graph will be given by the value init max flow, which we have been increasing by the bottleneck link each time when you have been found when we have been finding the different augmenting paths, and the maximum flow is seven will also give us the min cut, though we are not going to talk about min cut in this particular video. I hope this simple video gives you an understanding of how to implement Ford for Kirsten's algorithm. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel and watch the other videos in this playlist. Thank you.